1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. We're going to look at one verse today. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. The title of the message is, As We Start the New Year. As We Start the New Year. As We Start the New Year. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. The Bible says, Let all your things be done with charity. Can we, Brother Caleb, open us in prayer? About to preach to us, Lord, Father, we pray that you please fill with the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes. Whatever you want to preach, Lord, please help us to hear it. Yeah. And open our ears and open our hearts and fill us with the Holy Spirit yes. so we can really apply it to our lives in this new year, Lord. Yes. Please be with us, Lord. Please keep us attentive. In Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. 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 As we start the new year, 2024 has just begun. We're on the seventh day of the new year. And as you could imagine, many of you, including myself, have New Year's resolution. If you don't have any, I don't know, either you're perfect or you just don't care about your life. It's good to have goals. It's good to have resolution. And as a Christian, you should have resolution that aligns with the Word of God, where it will help you get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people have typical worldly resolutions. You know, they want to lose weight, so you know they set up a resolution where you know I'm at you know certain certain pounds. I want to get to these pounds, and many people say I'm going to exercise, you know, and I'm going to exercise you know one hour three days a week or whatnot. Many people say you know I'm going to read a book, I'm going to go to places, I'm going to do certain things, but as Christians. As I thought about the New Year's resolution, we need to have conform resolution as a church and as a body of Christ. First thing is that you have to love the Lord more in this new year. Amen. It's a cliche, something that everyone says, you know, something like a rhetoric question and answer. But you have to love the Lord more in 2024 more than any other years in the past. I mean, if you haven't, and if you don't have that desire to love the Lord more in 2024, more than 2023, 2022, since you've gotten saved, then something's wrong with you. Definitely tells you that you're a backslidden Christian. You're full of physical priorities, flashily priorities. If first thing that comes to your mind is not to love the Lord more this year, then you are completely out of place. It's like driving a car and your wheel alignment is off. What happens when your wheel alignment is off? For first few days, maybe even few months, you could still manage it. But eventually, it's going to start, you know, you're going to feel all this movie movement in your car. You know, it's, and then suddenly, you know, when you're trying to go straight, you go to the right, far right, or you yeah. go to the far left. And then you have to do really hard to keep it in the middle. If you do not start the year with the priority and desire to love the Lord more, then your year is going to eventually go out of line. If Lord's right there in straight, you're just going to go different places. What is love, Right? Now, let's define that. What is charity? You know, in the Bible, love comes about 442 times, and charity comes about 24 times. So it is very important. Charity is to give. Literally, charity means to give, right? But our idea, this Hollywood, this new age definition of love is always receive and take. All you want to do is take, take. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, right? All you want to do is receive. Wherever you are, whether you are here at church, whether you are at home, whether you are at work, whether you are anywhere, you know, people's idea is to just receive and just take and take. If we look at marriage, for example, what is true marriage where charity abounds? 
you have to give in, right? You got to give. Yes. You have to give in. You have to give out. And you have to give up. That's marriage. I mean, if you don't give in, if you don't give out, and if you don't give up in your marriage, your marriage will fail. Because all you want to do is take and take and take. Then as selfish people you already are, what's going to happen? You're going to abound in quarrel, fights over and over and over. That's why when you think about how do I love the Lord more, just think about the word charity. you got to give to the Lord more in every facet of your life. You know, Dr. Ruckman puts it this way, right? If you love God, if you love Christ, then it will show up eventually. It will manifest on a daily basis. I don't have to ask you to explain to me how you love the Lord. It will show up in your daily life. It will show up in your words. It will show up in your actions. It will show up in your thoughts. It will show up in your companions. And it will show up in your heart. Your words will be all about loving the Lord. Your actions will be all about loving the Lord. Your thoughts is full of love for the Lord. Your companions are full of people who love the Lord. I mean, New Year's, if you have bad friends, bad companions, companions, right? Get rid of them. I mean, if it's not going to help you, what do you have them? Unless you want to witness to them. You know, like through Brother Kevin, you know, he brought his friend and his friend brought his brother and brother's friend last week. And that friend's brother got saved. That's good. Praise the Lord for that. But... If you have companions, even if it's Christian companions, who brings you down, who takes you further away from love of the Lord, you got to stay away. Yeah. you got to stay away like they're plagues. Amen. Right? You have to. Especially if they had the chances. Especially if they were rebuked, reproved. But hearts never changing. Like the Bible says, just isolate them. Isolate them. Amen. Or else, you're going to be polluted together. Yeah. We see many cases where people come through our church, you know, past, you know, 20, what, 5, 27 years. You know. When people go down the ship, right, they don't go down alone. No. They always take somebody. They always do. Yes. We have people, you know, who leave the church because they don't follow what the Bible says, literally. Because what we follow is the word of God. Amen. And because of their selfish, petty reasons, fleshly reasons, they always want to have someone else join them. Mm. You know, that pastor, he doesn't do the things the right way. And obviously, he's trying to get a feel for the rest of the people. Start calling everybody. Oh, yeah, I feel the same. <laughs> okay. And then what happens? No, they're no longer here. Is that really showing love for the Lord? No. It's not. Your love will manifest. Your actions and words will not be criticizing or murmuring or believing something against people of God. Amen. If you truly love the Lord, think about it. People think that we idolize Dr. Ruckman. We don't. We just follow him because his teachings are correct. Amen. He stood for the word of God. Yes. If I stand for the word of God, you could be followers of me as well. Yes. Simple. People are followers of people that God uses. But if you go against those leaders, then you don't really love God. Right. Because you are conforming and you are believing this critical nature that people have where people murmur and criticize against the leaders of the church. Mind you, pastors, a lot of times people will just be like, yeah, you know, pastors, you know, too scary and stuff. So I'm not I'm going to leave him alone and I don't want to touch him. Right. But you know who they attack after? Always pastors wives. They always do. Weaker vessel. They always say, oh, you know, so-and-so, you know, she's not 
managing this part of the church, right? You know, she don't show up, you know, and you don't even know, you know, how hard it is to be a pastor's wife. You could support me 100%. You could even die for me. But if you don't love my wife, I don't care about you. Don't even say you support me or love me because she's half of me. All right. Same thing with Pastor Kim and Mrs. Kim. Yes. Why do you think a lot of people have a misunderstanding of love, this charity, and they're always being a miserable troublemaker and leave the church? Because they always do only half truth to it, right? Man, you ask any of the, you know, brethren who's been serving the Lord. A lot of times troubles happen because congregation do not love pastor's wife the same as they love the pastor. It's like you only love half of me. What about the other half, right? Other half you just want to criticize, you just want to step on, you just want to spit upon. Right? Well, you do know that, you know, those pastor and pastor wife, they'll receive the same reward. Because they're one. They're half. So where was your thought all this time? Right? I mean, was the second half, the half of the pastors, which are wives, do you even care about them? You know, and like, I appreciate it. Like when... Someone like Pastor Cole comes to Jubilee and preaches messages, right? Even, you know, up there, you know, Pastor Jim Kim's church, you know, Brother Randall, he preaches about it too. Most neglected being in the ministry has always been the pastor's wives. And they're the one who always gets sick. And a lot of times. Why? Because devil wants to attack them. You attack half of me, then, you know, I'm going to get hurt. Yes. But where is the love? for pastor's wives, right, in the ministry. If your heart never pray, care about the pastor's wife, you don't really care about the ministry, right? right? You're, you're not loving the Lord. Lord put people in places to lead the ministry, and if you don't wholeheartedly follow those leaders, then you don't love the Lord. Right? Can you imagine when... Joshua took over Moses. People are like, you know what? You're not Moses anymore, so I can't follow you. I don't love you. What happened to those people? They were gone. Yeah. You know. And then they were punished by God. If you truly say you love the Lord, you're going to love people who follow the Lord. Yes. Everybody, right? Then you have to examine if they are truly following the word of God. It can't be a personal feeling. Right. If I don't follow what the Bible says, you know, you can't just love me because you've known me for a long time. You gotta cut it off on the spot. If I go into apostasy and you know, turn away from the truth, then don't follow me. You shouldn't in the right. first place. Amen. You have to have that kind of spiritual discernment. Yes. yes then in order to do that, you have to love the Lord. If it is going to manifest in your life, your desire is to please Him at always. They say, how do I love the Lord? Your whole being wants to please Him all the time. That's it, That's it right? I mean, do you want to please Him right now? Yes. Do you want to please Him tomorrow? Do you want to please Him tonight? You have to have that heart. Whatever you do, I want to please my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Then in order to please him, what do you have to do? You have to think about him all the time. I don't have to tell you if you ever fell in love before or if you are in love right now. You think about that person all the time, right? If you love a person truly, you're going to think about that person all the time. I mean, how often do you think about Lord Jesus Christ in your daily lives? 2023, maybe you're too busy. Maybe you're too carnal. Maybe you're too backslidden. Maybe you're just in sin all the time. Maybe you're depressed, right? Maybe the world was too hard for you. 
Life was too hard. Family was too hard. But if you think about him, constantly you're going to love him. Who in the world can say, I love you, I only think about you on Sundays? <laughs> right? I mean, you're, a, lot of, a lot of us just do that to the Lord. Yeah. Lord, I love you. I love seeing, oh, how I love Jesus, right? But only once a week. Twice a week if you come on Wednesday. Maybe three times a week if you come, you know, street preaching and all the other ministries, right? But what about the majority then? Yes. You know, four out of seven days, what are you doing? Are you really loving the Lord? Then you have to think about Him. And if you truly love the Lord, you're going to talk about Him, right? Yes. You have to. It's like, you're going to talk to your close people first, right? Yes. I mean, think about it. I mean, if you truly are in a rightful relationship, especially in our church, right? You date to get married. You know, you don't date to get full around, right? right? Then, if you think that's the one, right? You pray and you know for sure. Then you got to talk to that person to everybody you meet. Because you love that person, right? You know, you're not going to like suddenly date before marriage. Like, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, pastor, I'm meeting this person tomorrow. Oh, really? (laughs) You know, something's really wrong. You've been hiding all these years, right? Even a week or a month, even a day. Ah, It's unacceptable. You know, let's see. You're going to talk about that person. Maybe not to your immediate family. You're like, I'm scared, you know, I'm I'm scared of the reaction. But you're going to talk to your friends about it. Like your best friend. Hey, you know, I started dating this person. And you can't talk about that person if you really love that person. You know, you like everything about that person, right? I mean, that's how usually it happens, right? You know, majority of the marriage, you get married because you love that person. Yes. And you love talking about that person. You, pl- you love pleasing that person. You think about that person all the time. And if you love the Lord, right? You're going to, like I said, when it comes to companion, you're going to avoid his enemies. I don't know why Christians always try to be this hero, right? Try to be like, you know, get closer to the enemies and think like, you know, I'm going to make my enemies my friends, serve the Lord. I'll tell you from experience, it never works. You know, when I first found the Truth and King James Bible, you know, me and my brother were going to this worldly secular church. I thought I could change them with all this, you know, new doctrines that I'm learning, you know, from Genesis to Revelation. Truth about the King James Bible. They don't care. Show them right in front of their eyes from the Word of God. NIV, you're using is devil's Bible. They don't care. Speaking in tongue is from the devil right this day right now. They don't care. They all want Holy Spirit experience. They want praise and worship. They don't want anything to do with King James Bible. Right. So avoid his enemies, right? Amen. It's like this. You guys know the story of Romeo and Juliet? They hated each family, right? Tragic love. There's some truth to it. You're going to end up tragic. I was like, it be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers? Unless... You know, you are in Christ, God loves no man. Apart from Christ, God loves no man. According to John 3, 16 and Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love to us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. Unless you're in Christ, forget it. God showed his love at Calvary. That's it. People who have accepted it, who have trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior, then God loves. If not... Oof. Don't think that God's going to love you enough to, you know, even though you didn't accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and Him alone, that you go to heaven. No, you're going to end up in hell. So apart from Christ, the sinner abides in God's wrath. That's it. You can't even love God if you're not in Christ. Truly. If you're listening to this message, and if you don't know where you're going after you die, there's a big problem, eternal problem. If you were in a wrong place at the wrong time, born into a wrong religious family and stuff, whether it's Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, right? Catholic, you know, Presbyterian, even, you know, so-called Southern Baptist, 
And if you have not rejected those doctrines and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, especially Pentecostals and Charismatics, you know, there's a good chance you're not trusting Christ alone only to go to heaven based on all of our conversations that I've had. Yes. Right? At the end of the day, someone were to ask you, what makes you think that you're going to heaven? What are you trusting to get you out of hell? If Holy Spirit comes out first, man, something's wrong with you. Yes. Because that means that you're trusting a Holy Spirit experience. Unless you go straight to Jesus Christ, because he saved my soul from hell, washing my sins away through his precious blood, because he's my Lord and Savior. If that's not the answer, if Christ is not your you know, ticket to heaven, only ticket to heaven, then you've got to check your salvation. Amen. Right? I mean, wouldn't it be ironic if you're going to a sporting event and it's a Dodgers game here, LA Dodgers, you give him an angel's ticket. Like, hey, you know, can I get in? No, you know, only Dodger ticket allowed, yes. right? Ah, oh, you know, here's a Lakers ticket. It's not even the same sport, right? <laughs> you know, like, but people do it that way. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to combine the barcodes. Dodgers and angels, you know, I'm going to combine it. Can you scan it? You can't. It's the only Dodgers ticket that you could get into Dodger Stadium. Right. Yes. Only way you could love the Lord, only way you could go to heaven is having Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. Amen. In your salvation ticket. If you have it, then at least you have a chance to love Him more and more. And typical, right? You know, how are you going to love the Lord more? You have to get closer to Him. You have to have a closer relationship with Him. That means that you have to pray more. Yes. How are you going to talk to Him? You got to pray. You got to get on your knees and pray and pray and pray. You're like, you've told me that a million times. I'm going to tell you two million times Keep more. Telling us. Yeah. Yes. You and I have to hear it all the time. Because did you pray this morning like you ought to have? I mean, little, really. I mean, oh, I have to get ready for church. I have kids to get ready to. Is that an excuse? No. Did Christ stop what he's doing because he was getting tortured? He was getting beaten up to a point you can't even recognize him. So did he stop? No, sir. No. I mean, you, you, you don't even compare to 0.001% of what he went through. And you're complaining that, oh, it was too busy this morning, so I couldn't spend time with him. Hey, you're a fool. Yes. Man, shame on you. Amen. Like, come on. You could wake up a little earlier. Yes. I guarantee you, if I tell you guys, you know what? Uh, we have a free ticket, and we're going to go to, I don't know, maybe a nice place as a church group. And you have to get here by 6 a.m., right? And you have the best experience ever. Then you're going to get here by 6 a.m. Yeah, you're going to come here a little earlier because you yes. never want to miss it. Because at 6 o'clock, we're going to take off. But when it comes to spending time with the Lord, man, you don't really care. Right? Uh, Lord, you know, I'll just spend maybe a minute or two with you. Man, if you ever were in a relationship or in a relationship right now, is one two minute enough? Like, hey, I love you. 60 seconds. Okay, gone. I'll, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You know? No. You're going to spend a lot of time with him. You have to spend more time in prayer. So you just have to measure. This is going to be a resolution. My resolution, I'm going to spend more time with the Lord in prayer than years past. You have to start somewhere. If you spend 10 minutes per day, then you're going to spend 15, 20 more. Right? If you spend one minute or if you spend zero in fellowship with the Lord in the past years, then you've got to start with at least 5, 10 minutes. Right? And don't fool yourself that I'm going to start doing one hour. Those are the people who quit after the first day. And this is too hard for me. You have to create that habit. You have to build that behavior as a Christian. you got to spend more time with the Lord. And with that, what else are you going to do? You're going to read more Bible. Right? You have to. Yes. Let the Lord talk to you. 
lot of times you're just sitting down in prayer and then you're done after 60 seconds and rest of them is intercession time because you don't know what to pray. Because you don't know anything about the Word of God. I mean, we preach on all the time, right? 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. You have to study. I mean, you really have to study the Word of God. You have to read. You have to meditate. You have to memorize. You just have to be in the Word all the time. 2024, hopefully, you know, this is day number seven, You've, you've read more Bible than last year, up to this point. If I'm not mistaken, you know, Genesis, if you started from Genesis 1, you should be near Genesis 30 by now, if you want to read through the Word of God. Okay? Where are you? Have you read 30 chapters yet? If you did, hey, that's good. You know, maybe you do want to love the Lord more. If you barely read anything, Man, you don't love the Lord. You know, don't tell your family. Don't pay, tell your friends that I love the Lord. You know, you're that type of crowd. Love without truth. All the people out there praise and worship. I love you, Lord, right? And they have those projector, projectors out there. You know, all they do is wave their hand with the drums, right? And they're singing over and over for one hour. And they're like, oh, I love the Lord. Man, that was a great love experience, right? You're no better than them. You're love without the truth. What's truth? The word of God. If you don't have the truth, if you don't grow your truth, if you're not in the truth, you can't have the right love. I mean, a lot of fundamentalists, what's wrong with them? They have truth, but they have no love. All they want to do is puff up their knowledge and put people down. And I don't want any of our congregation in our ministry to be like that. Just because you know more doctrines than 99% of the false pastors out there, don't be, you know, smart alecky Christians. You want to be person with charity, right? Yes. You want to have compassion. You want to have kindness, yes. gentleness, and lead people the right way. But you can't even do that if you don't have any truth. So read more Bible, right? And if you want to love more, this is what you got to do. As I said, you got to avoid his enemies, and you got to love his friends. You got to lose sin. You got to stay away from sin. Amen. If you commit sin, you can't love the Lord. You can't. You got to stay away from sin. Because if you stay away from sin, it shows you one thing. You know, charity suffers long. What does that mean? You're going to start suffering for his sake and suffer through a long time without complaining. If you truly love the Lord, you love to suffer for his sake, right? All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If there's no persecution in your life, you're not living godly. Yeah. Simple as that. If, if I'm reading the Bible literally as it says like we should, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. When was the last time you got persecuted for Christ's sake? When was the last time you suffered for Christ's sake? The true essence of love that Jesus Christ showed us is that he suffered for us. Yes. He suffered for a long time. Compassion. Did he complain? No. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you will suffer for him. And it's not just one moment. Like, oh, someone cussed at me at street preaching. I've suffered for him for the entire year. <laughs> so I'm going to stay away, you know. Oh, and I tried to pass out a track, and they cussed at me. I'm done for the year. No. You thank God that you had opportunity to do something for him. I mean, this is a famous story. We hear it all the time. John Wesley, you know, Methodist preacher, you know, one of the most holiest person ever lived, aside from Apostle Paul. You know, he was receiving no persecution for a while. So he got out of his horse, knelt down, prayed, Lord, you know, show me, right? I mean, am I really 
doing the right thing for you. And then someone threw a rock at him right there, you know, <laughs> right next to him, right? Amen. You know? I mean, that's how close he was to the Lord. He loved the Lord so much, and he knew the Bible in certain places. Like, man, if I don't get any kind of persecution, I don't think I love the Lord. You know? I mean, were we ever that close to the Lord where our heart felt the same? Right? Well, and we're not talking about flogging yourself like Catholics, right? Yeah. No. You're actually suffering for the Lord for His sake Amen. by proclaiming Him, yes. by talking about Him, yes. by Him being manifested in your life. Yes. Man, this year, 2024, as we get closer to the Lord's return, man, wouldn't, aren't there better time than ever to really preach the gospel yes. to every creature? Amen. You're going to talk about Him to every person in the opportunity out there, right? So and, uh, my brake light went out, my passenger side, you know, and then went to AutoZone. I went with my wife and our dog, and we pray, right? We pray, Lord, you know, it's not too busy. We park a little bit away from the entrance, you know. You got to be wise as a servant, really. homeless as a dove. So, and then. Just went in, this young man by the name of Caesar, he said, oh yeah, you know, break light, you know. I said, oh, you guys could help replace it. Man. I mean, I know how to replace it, right? If you've ever done your DIY with the cars, replacing lights isn't the hardest thing to do. But if they're gonna offer the help, hey, receive the help, hey, let's go, you know. He replaced it, and then you know, he replaced the other one because it came with two. You know, right. before he goes out. He's a nice guy. He didn't have to replace the other one either, you know. And then just gave him a try, you know, and then started opening. And then, you know, he said he goes to this so-called church, and then, you know, I asked him, do you know for sure you go to heaven? He goes, no. You know, I think I'm like 90% sure, <laughs> you know. Like, then, then you're not sure, you know, 100% or not. I mean, praise the Lord, you know. He heard the things, and the, even though he was working, but he accepted Christ, hey, and he got hey. saved. And that tells me one thing, right? There are people out there who wants to hear about love of your life. They want to hear, yes. right? They want to hear you talk about it. There's people out there. You know, according to Matthew 5.16, you are the light of the world, right? Yes. You have to. If you really love the Lord, you got to open your mouth to him over and over and over. It doesn't matter. I mean, my resolution is that every single person that I meet this year, I'm going to at least offer them try. Amen. Every single person. Even if, I, even if I talk to them for one word, even if they talk to me, I'm just going to give it to them. It doesn't matter. Yes. You could say all the no's in the world. I'm just going to give it to you. you know, some people, you know, this year so far, right? They, they have frowning face. They knew what I was giving it to them. Some people are aware of, you know, you know chick tracks, right? Word of God. But, hey, is that going to stop me? I mean, I love your soul, so I'm not going to stop. I mean, at the end of the day, right, I do this because I love my Lord and Savior. Amen. 2024 should be the year where nothing should stop you from talking about the Lord. We, we don't live in North Korea, brethren. We're, we're not living in China. Amen. Where there's no freedom of speech. But we live in the United States of America where we still have freedom of speech, yes. where you could talk about anything then why don't you talk about the Lord? Yes. If you love Him. It's like, if you don't talk about the Lord, who is? Are there people in your family, around your life, are your co-workers? Do you expect Calvary Chapel crowd? Do you expect Joel Austin's of the world to preach about the truth? Right? Do you expect your bishop your priest? No. I mean, you're ambassador for Jesus Christ. Yes. You got to love him more. I mean, if you say, I loved him as I loved him enough so far, you're a, you're a liar. I mean, do you truly think that you love the Lord 24-7, 365, every day of your life? We can't. We're not perfect until we go to heaven. 
We can't. That's why we have to try and try every single day. Yes. That shows you that you have to hate that Lord hates. Love without hate is not a real love. Dr. Rockman said that. I mean, that's very true. Love without hate is not real love. You got to hate what the Bible hates. Amen. Right? The Bible says don't even look at alcohol. Right? Proverbs. And we have Christians who complain about moderate drinking is okay. You're a fool. Amen. I mean, Bible condemns it. But I mean, why do you have to like go against the word of God? If you really want to, I mean, for your reference, you know, Proverbs 23, 31 says it. Just, just go there. Leviticus chapter 10 talks about it, right? Bible, I mean, this is no on just the alcohol. Bible has full of verses condemning, even looking at it, drinking it, right? Like, oh, I love the Lord. But, you know, if someone talks about alcohol, I'm just going to, you know, I mean, at their place, you've got to be wise about it. But if you're put in an opportunity to speak something about alcohol, what are you going to say? Oh, yeah, six candy is okay. It's not going to make people drunk. A little wine here, white wine, red wine, blue wine, yellow wine. It's okay, right? Jesus drank wine. Fools don't even know it's a new wine, grape, from the vine. And these are Christians I'm talking about. I'm not even talking about unsaved people out there. Right. Christians. Yes. So-called Christians. Even in a Bible-believing circle. Right? You don't love the Lord because you don't hate the things that the Lord hates. This year, start hating the things that the Lord hates. Amen. Don't sin. Yes. Hate it. Don't accept it. Right? Oh, little gossip is okay. It makes my life more fun. Hate it. Amen. I mean, if someone's gossiping about somebody, just say, it's wrong. Yes. You could hate me for it. I hate what the Lord hates. Amen. If you don't start hating those things, your life's going to be a mess. You're going to be a compromiser. You're going to be backslidden. You've got to have that strong determination. That's where... Heart comes in. If, you're the, if you love the Lord from the bottom of your heart, man, you're going to hate the things that the Lord hates. And if you want to know more about things that the Lord hates, get in the book. Yes. Stop asking people, hey, what does the Lord hate? Right. <laughs> Read the book. It has it. All the answers. Yes. Just go straight to the Proverbs. Right? <laughs> you know, things that Lord hates is already in there. Yes. I mean, that's why Christians, the second thing, you know, first thing this new year, as we start the new year, you want to love the Lord more. Second thing, you want to love the brethren more. Ooh, it's hard, right? You know, it's not like we're a club where everybody loves doing, say, I don't know, riding bicycles, right? And then you have love for bicycle, and then you guys have like similar characters and stuff. No, we're here, people who love the truth, but from various backgrounds, yes. right? You're going to have people who might not match your character. You know? Yes. But we're still in the same body of Christ. Amen. Yes. I mean, do you do things to benefit others? I mean, that's a question. Do you do things to benefit your brothers and sisters in Christ? Ask that question to yourself. Have I done things that benefit my brothers and sisters in Christ? I mean, are you praying for them? That benefits them, right? You know, you admonish them, encourage them. That benefits them, right? Sometimes you just say hello to them. That benefits them, right? 
Ultimately, I mean, we had weird cases where some people left the church because they thought people didn't say hi to him, right? You know, don't be that person. But if you truly love your brethren, you're going to do things that will benefit your brethren. And you're not going to be a hypocrite. Right? Don't say you love the brethren, you don't do anything. Words are cheap. Like, I love you, sister. I love you, brother. But you never pray for them. Right? You never really did anything. And if you love your brethren, you're not going to be a proud person. You're not going to be vaunting yourself up. Right? You know, envy is prevalent everywhere. You can't be that person. All you talk about is, hey, you know, I have this, I have that. You can't. People are from different backgrounds. Right? Yes. And people have different, you know, means of living. You gotta be considerate. You could be in that shoes tomorrow. Yes. Right? You gotta be able to understand and put your shoes in your brethren's feet. When was the last time you truly care about brethren? I know you did if you pray for them on a daily basis for a long time, then you, you, you truly care for them. It's a lot of people to pray for, right? It's a lot of names to remember. If you truly, truly love your brethren, you're going to get on your knees and pray for them. Amen. You're going to pray for their well-being, safety, their spiritual state, right? You're going to pray for their health. You're going to pray for their family. You're going to pray for their job. You're going to pray for everything. Then, can you believe it? Even if you pray for 30 people, if you pray for 30 people, at least one minute per person or two minutes per person, that's an hour. So don't tell me that I can't pray for more than five minutes. Because you don't pray for your brethren. You don't pray for others. Right? So to this year, 2024, let's love the brethren more. Amen. By praying for them. Yes. Right? If you pray for them, the rest of them will align itself. You don't have to try to be a hypocrite and try to be nice to them outside. Right? Because that doesn't last long. It's just the outside appearance, but it's not coming from inside. True. Right? It's better for you to be just true to yourself, right? Yes. Than try to be a fake. But you don't have to be a fake if you do it from your heart by praying for them. Right? right? You don't have to smile at each other. You don't even have to talk to each other, right? But if you pray for each other, that's the most important thing. So 2024, you know, start praying for each other more. Yes, sir. I mean, that will show that you love each other more. And lastly, you know, simple message, right? Love the lost souls more. Right? Amen. You have to. Amen. We could always do better in loving the lost souls out there. We have to pray for them more. We have to definitely witness to them more. Every opportunity. Like I said, brethren, you and I have zero excuse in this country and the resources that we have. Our church have countless, countless tracks to pass out. You should be grabbing some every single week, right? You should be coming back every Sunday. It ran out. You know, well, I'm almost at the end. Don't run out. You know, that means that probably you don't have a chance to pass out to everybody. Like, just do whatever you can to win lost soul to the Lord. Are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? I am not, according to Romans 1.16. Each time you do not pass out a track or open your mouth for Lord Jesus Christ to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, it tells you tells me, he tells the Lord, he tells the whole world that you're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. After what he has done for you. I mean, he shed his precious blood. He went through the most cruel death ever. He's actually inside of you if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior. I mean, you know, when you walk around, some people have their loved ones as a necklace. You've seen it. Yes. If a parent lose their children, 
if their children loses their parents, grandparents, best friends, they have it. And then, you know, they show it to people. And they love it when people start asking questions. And this is my loved one, right? He or she was so precious to me. Let me talk to you about her. Let me talk to you about him. They do it for just a mere mortal human being. I mean, isn't that a shameful thing that we don't do it for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Yeah. I mean, going back to the first thing, if we love the Lord, we're going to talk about him constantly because we, we, we want to please him and we thank him. We think about him all the time. Yes. You have to make sure that you put it in your heart. Man, this year, as, the, as we start the new year, Man, I'm just going to love the low souls like ever be never before. Amen. Every lost souls I see, you know what? I'm going to just open my mouth for the Lord. Even if it's a few sentences, even if it's just, you know, a couple words, take this, right? I'm just going to do it. You know? Because I'm going to look beyond that physical appearance. I'm going to see the real them, yes. which is lost soul on their way to hell. Yes. You have to do it. I mean, you and I are the light of this world. If we don't show them the light, they're going to follow darkness and burn in hell eternally. That's the last thing I want to see. At least we should give him a chance, right? Man, you and I actually can give him a chance. You know, people are super appreciative of people who give him a chance. Even, you know, like job interviews, even if they can't get the job, they appreciate people who give them opportunity, right? Yes. I mean, and we're not talking about just simple job here. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about billions of souls on their way to hell. And you, God could use you to lead him out of hell to eternity in heaven once and for all. I mean, that's the greatest thing. And concluding, like our text verse says, all of these things have to be done with charity. You do it because you love the Lord. At the end of the day, you and I could win 100 million souls to the Lord, but if we don't do it without, um, with charity, if we don't do it because we love the Lord, it's like you work like 1,000 hours, 2,000 hours in a year, 2,080 hours, and you get zero salary. No reward for you. You do it because out of charity, because you want to please the Lord, because you love the lost souls out there, because you love the brethren. This year, unlike the other years, let's make it where we show our love for the Lord more, we demonstrate our love for our brethren more, and we actually take action to love the lost souls. Let's Amen. pray. Dear Father, it is shameful to discuss as a saved Christians how much love we have for you and the brethren in the lost world out there. We're so selfish, we don't think about anybody else. Help us to lose our selfish ways, carnal ways, fleshly ways, devilish ways, and worldly ways. Confess our sins, get right with you, Lord and just love you more, which will lead us to love our brethren, love our lost souls out there. Help us to be a better witness for you each day and not be puffed up or vaunted up, but just giving glory to you and appreciate the opportunity, every opportunity you've given us to love you more, love the brethren more, especially lost souls out there. I pray that 2024, you know, you come back soon, Lord, and we'll be found faithful when you find us, Lord. Bless the rest of the service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.